Every single child has the right to be free from abuse. Every single child has the right to be with a parent who will love and protect them from any harm that comes their way. However, as we see far too often, that is not what always ends up happening. Far too frequently, we see the courts handing children over to their abusers. Despite the warnings, despite testimony from those who want to see the child thrive, courts will show leniency towards parents who have proven themselves to be dangerous. That is what happened in Caden's case. She had a mother and stepfather who loved her to no end, and a father who was violent, impulsive, and mentally unwell. Yet, somehow, Caden was allowed to spend time with her father, unsupervised, and that would have detrimental consequences. But before we get into this case, I want to say a huge thank you to today's sponsor, Rocket Money. Now, I'm someone who has trouble with keeping a close eye on spending and budgeting since I do have multiple sources of income and different purposes for different bills and different business expenses or just regular expenses. It can be a lot to keep track of. It can be really hard to keep track of all of my everyday bills, my utilities, my subscriptions, and where all of my money is going. I am a huge money saver. I'm pretty cheap and I like to save money wherever I can, but I know there are so many other ways that I can be saving even more. And that is where Rocket Money comes in. Rocket Money is an all-in-one personal finance platform that helps you save more and spend less. Rocket Money helps save money in so many different ways. Rocket Money can cancel unwanted subscriptions by identifying recurring charges and canceling unwanted subscriptions for you with just one tap. No more spending hours on the phone on the wait line just to get someone on the phone who keeps trying to get you to keep your subscription and promising to offer discounts and things like that just to sucker you into staying. That is the most annoying thing to me when I'm trying to cancel a subscription, especially to a newspaper. They're always coming out with these like, oh, just for you, I can give you these little deals. No, I don't have to deal with that anymore thanks to Rocket Money. Rocket Money can also help you lower your bills, which I think is one of the coolest features. All you do is upload a photo by tapping a button and Rocket Money can negotiate your bills for you from an internet service bill to your cell phone and cable bills as well. The other thing I use a lot with Rocket Money is their budgeting feature. Rocket Money sets up budgets that automatically monitor your spending by category and it will give you notifications when you exceed your budget. And each month, it will give you a visual ratio of where your money was spent. Then you can also set up a smart savings account where you choose the amount and frequency and Rocket Money will automatically deposit savings into a smart savings account where you can withdraw at any time. That is another one of my favorite features. I have trouble remembering to put money into my savings account every single month. There are months that go by that I don't even think about it and I totally forget. So I really like that it's automatic and I don't even have to think about it. I know that I'm saving money without even trying. So if you want to start saving more and spending less with ease, make sure you use my link down below at rocketmoney.com slash Rachel Shannon to download Rocket Money and unlock more features with premium. Again, make sure you head to rocketmoney.com slash Rachel Shannon to download Rocket Money now. Thank you again so much to Rocket Money for partnering with me on today's video. With that being said, today's case is a very rough one, so let's just get right into it. This is Caden's story. Caden Mancuso was born to parents Catherine Giglio Sherlock and Jeff Mancuso. Catherine and Jeff had met during the summer of 2009 on the Jersey Shore, and according to Catherine, her relationship with Jeff was more of a fling, but when she found out she was pregnant with Caden, she tried to make it work with him. She moved in with him and tried to raise their daughter together, but it didn't work out. The pair separated when Caden was one year old. Two years after that, Catherine started dating a new man named Brian Sherlock, and by 2017, the pair was married. From that marriage, Caden had two little brothers, Kyler and Blake. Caden was about to enter the second grade at Edgewood Elementary School in Fairless Hills, Pennsylvania. Caden was known to be your typical seven-year-old little girl. She loved emojis, unicorns, mermaids, LOL surprise dolls, and she and her family were huge Phillies and Eagles fans. She loved to draw, do her friend's hair and makeup, and she loved to sing and play with her little brothers and cousins. 
Caden was also known to excel in athletics, even at such a young age. She was set to play softball on the 10U Pensbury Gems softball team. She played soccer, and she also did gymnastics. Caden was known to be enthusiastic and happy with a sparkling personality. She was loved by everyone around her. She was cherished by her family, and she touched the lives of everyone around her. From the time that Caden was very young, she lived primarily with her mother, Catherine, and then when she married Brian, she lived with them along with her two younger brothers. Meanwhile, Jeff was allowed visitation. Catherine wanted custody of Caden because since 2009, Jeff had proved himself to be unreliable, violent, and overall a dangerous person to be around. According to Jeff's sister, from a young age, Jeff was troubled. For the 10 years that followed 2009, Jeff was charged with various levels of assault as well as multiple charges of trespassing, harassment, and inappropriate behavior. Now, according to Jeff's sister, he grew up as a loving, normal child. Their parents divorced when he was just three years old, so the two of them were raised primarily by their mother but they did still manage to maintain a close relationship with their father. But by the time Jeff reached high school, very concerning behaviors started to arise. He started getting into fights all of the time, even punching one teacher, which got him expelled. He got into a car accident at one point, which landed him a brain injury, which can help explain some of his behaviors. And then after that, he started drinking very heavily. He continued drinking and fighting all throughout his time in college, but he did manage to graduate with a degree in business from Townsend University in Maryland. As an adult, as I stated, his bad behaviors and heavy drinking continued. After graduating college, he got himself a job at a headhunting firm in Cherry Hill, but after only a few months of working there, he was fired after having a dispute with his boss. After that, he started his own business where he found jobs for people in architecture, engineering, and construction. Now, going back a little bit to talk more about Jeff's concerning behaviors as it relates to Caden. When Catherine was pregnant with Caden, there was one incident where Jeff pushed Catherine over and she fell off of a chair. And then there was one more severe incident where Jeff had strangled Catherine to the point where she felt like she could have died. By 2009, he threw a beer bottle at a man and the man's wife after getting into a fight at a bar. The bottle broke and cut the woman's face. At this time, he was charged with aggravated assault, simple assault, recklessly endangering another person, and possessing an instrument of crime. He ended up pleading guilty to simple assault in exchange for dropping the other charges, and at that time, he was sentenced to two years of probation. Then, there was yet another incident back in 2012. This incident was really the breaking point for Catherine. In this incident, Jeff had gotten into a bar fight with another man at a Philadelphia bar, and Jeff bit the man's ear off. Jeff would later go on to tell a psychologist, quote, I beat him up, he put me in a headlock, I bit down on his ear, and took off the top part of his ear. After that incident, he was arrested once again and charged with recklessly endangering another person, aggravated assault, and simple assault. He was found guilty on all charges, and he was sentenced to home arrest with an ankle monitor. He also had to submit to random alcohol and drug testing and attend anger management counseling. Like I said, that was the breaking point for Catherine, so she packed up and left after her man bit someone's ear off. That is just absurd. At that time, Catherine knew that Jeff was violent and prone to aggression, but she didn't think that he would ever hurt his own daughter. For a while, Caden was the only positive thing in Jeff's life. He adored Caden, and Caden looked up to her father and loved spending time with him. So, when the separation first happened, Catherine and Jeff set up an informal custody agreement where he would see Caden every other weekend. And for a while, things worked out really well. Like I said, for the time being, Jeff was a really great father. Caden trusted him, he treated her well, and he followed the informal custody agreement very well, and there were never any issues about his behavior towards Caden. However, Jeff's behaviors outside of his parenting did continuously get worse. He continuously did whatever he wanted, and he made it clear that no matter what, no one was going to get in his way. 
This behavior continued for years. Then, like I said, he was a heavy drinker as well, which definitely did not slow down during this time. By 2017, he was arrested for a DUI. He also had multiple probation violations, but none of the reports I saw specified exactly what he did. Then, like I said, Catherine got married to Brian in 2017, but after this marriage, Jeff actually sued Catherine for partial custody. Catherine describes the situation as Jeff going on a rampage. He threw accusation after accusation at her, all of which were unfounded. Catherine said that she believed this happened after she got married to Brian because Jeff couldn't handle the thought of Caden being happy in a different family. And as things didn't go exactly how Jeff wanted, he got restless. He sent her hundreds of life-threatening emails and even stalked her at her job where she worked as an emergency room nurse. Jeff was once seen blowing up at Catherine outside of the courthouse after one of their court appearances. Then Jeff started lashing out against his own dog with Caden witnessing Jeff punching the dog in the face multiple times times. Jeff then hit and pushed his own mother in front of Caden and then punched himself in the face while in a fit of rage. It was at that point that Caden started telling her mom that she was afraid of her dad. She told her mom that her dad would always make her talk about court when she was with him. She said that dad tells her to tell the judge that mom is trying to take her away from dad. Then there was one time where Catherine found Caden in tears, and when she asked Caden what was wrong, she said that her dad called her, and when she answered, he yelled at her for not answering earlier. He said that he hated her on this call, and then hung up. Obviously, this was very hurtful and traumatic for the little girl to hear from her own dad. A year after the custody battle started, Catherine did file for a restraining order against Jeff after seeing all of these increasingly violent behaviors from him, and this was granted, but she wasn't able to file for protection against Caden. Police in the situation said that because Jeff wasn't actively hurting Caden or Catherine, there wasn't much that they could do. However, Caden's mother and stepfather weren't the only ones concerned for Caden's safety. Even teachers from Caden's school were concerned with Jeff's behaviors. There were times that he would belittle her teachers and left them threatening comments on online forums. In one incident, Jeff had brought Caden late to one of her soccer games, and this caused an argument between Jeff and Brian. According to Caden's coach, he saw Jeff getting all up in Brian's face, trying to provoke an altercation. This behavior concerned the coach so much that he genuinely felt that Jeff needed to seek psychological help. Through all of the court hearings, the judge heard from so, so many witnesses, including Jeff's own family members, teachers, Brian, and Catherine, all talking about Jeff's evolving erratic concerning behaviors. Not one person took the stand to speak on behalf of Jeff, not his sister, not his mother. No one was able to take the stand to say that Jeff was a good person. Nobody felt confident that Jeff was a capable father who wouldn't hurt his daughter. Catherine eventually got the feeling that the judge, Judge Jeffrey G. Trogger, just was not listening. She begged and begged him to consider what she had to say and listen to even what Caden was saying about being afraid of her dad. Even Catherine's own attorney wasn't of much help to her. She begged that if she did get visitation with Jeff, that they at least be supervised because she truly believed that he was going to hurt her or Catherine or Caden whenever he got time with her to be alone. However, at the time, Catherine felt like the judge just considered her to be a toxic mom who was just trying to get back at an ex. So, the judge decided that both Catherine and Jeff needed psychological help and ordered the both of them to undergo psychiatric evaluations. In Catherine's evaluation, she was determined to have anxiety, which is absolutely understandable in her situation. She probably was anxious 24-7 worrying about her daughter. But other than that, she had no serious ailments that could prevent her from being a competent, loving mother. Jeff, on the other hand, he was diagnosed with major depressive disorder and anxiety with narcissistic and antisocial personality traits. 
he was said to have suicidal thoughts and feelings of hopelessness. For those of you who do not know, antisocial personality traits doesn't mean that he's like socially awkward or really introverted or whatever. Antisocial personality traits, according to the DSM-5, include failure to conform to social laws or norms, irritability and aggressiveness, reckless disregard for the safety of self or others, consistent irresponsibility, and lack of remorse, among others. So, probably not somebody who should be raising a child, in my opinion. Either way, after undergoing the mental health evaluation, the courts decided that each parent should have access to her school and medical records, they should be able to participate in all of her school and social activities, and they should make an effort to allow Caden to stay in communication with the other parent. So, if she was with Jeff, she should be allowed to contact Catherine, and if she's with Catherine, she should be allowed to contact Jeff. Then, for the visitation, the judge ruled that Catherine would have primary custody of Caden. Jeff would be allowed custody of her every other weekend, where she could spend the Saturday and Sunday with him from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. Jeff did not have to be supervised as long as Jeff received mental health treatment. However, the courts did not set up a mandated mental health program. It was pretty much up to him to go find a therapist and go get treatment. According to some sources, apparently the judge didn't feel like they could force Jeff to get mental health treatment or take any prescribed medication in family court cases. The judge noted that Caden hadn't previously been harmed by Jeff and that Caden didn't appear to be afraid of him during the hearings. She was deemed to be a happy child who had a good relationship with both parents, despite the bad relationship the two had with each other. Looking back, of course, Catherine said that she wishes that she could have stepped up more and done more to make sure that the courts heard just how dire the situation was. Whether she went into contempt of court or even if she was arrested, she wishes that she would have done even more to prevent Caden from being with her father unsupervised. Because again, she did voice over and over and over again her concerns, but that wasn't enough. They just were not listening. By August 2nd, 2018, Caden went up to Ocean City, New Jersey with her aunt, Jeff's sister, Allison, as well as her paternal grandmother. They all just had a relaxing few days at the beach, spending time as a family, but Jeff was not invited. In fact, he didn't even know about this. At this point, again, Allison and Jeff's mother knew that Jeff was a violent man who honestly shouldn't even be allowed to have a daughter. But they still loved Caden, so obviously they wanted to spend time with her. By August 3rd, Allison got a text from Catherine saying that she could bring Caden to Jeff's house on Saturday for his court ordered time with her. But once Caden found out about that, she expressed that she didn't want them to drop her off because she said, quote, daddy will be mad. She was afraid that Jeff would be angry if he found out that his sister and mother spent time with Caden without telling him and without inviting him. Allison will later say that Jeff would call them traitors anytime they spent time with her behind his back. So instead of dropping her off straight at Jeff's house on August 4th, they brought her back to her mother's house in Langhorn. That same day, Caden's stepdad, Brian, dropped her off at Jeff's house for their court-ordered visit. However, when Sunday evening came and Jeff did not drop Caden back off like he was supposed to, Brian and Catherine got really worried. They tried giving him the benefit of the doubt at first, hoping that he was just late. But by 10.30 p.m. that night, they got panicked and decided to head over to Manioc, which is just over a 30-minute drive away. They knocked on the door, but they got no answer. Immediately, they called the police. It took over 90 minutes for an officer to arrive, and by the time they did arrive, they told Catherine and Brian that they couldn't do anything without a search warrant. However, that didn't really make a lot of sense because knowing the situation, the officer could have made a judgment call. The pertinent information was that Jeff was supposed to drop Caden off by 6 or 7 p.m. that day, 
It was several hours later and he wasn't answering. He was directly violating a court order. According to later remarks from their homicide detective, the officer absolutely could have entered the home at that time. Of course, though, Catherine and Brian didn't know that. They believed what the officer told them because why wouldn't they trust an officer who knows the law better than they do? So they went home that night and waited. That night, according to Catherine, she kept telling herself that Jeff would not hurt Caden. She assured herself that Jeff loved Caden and that no matter what mental health issues he had, that he would not hurt his daughter. The following morning, after being up pretty much all night and posting her on Facebook to see if anybody had seen Caden, by around 10.50 a.m., Brian, along with Catherine's father and Caden's grandfather, returned back to Jeff's home to check things out. They looked around and realized that the back door was actually open, so they went inside the home and went into the living room, and that is when Brian made the most horrific, heartbreaking discovery that he could have possibly made. Brian and Catherine's father found Caden's little, lifeless body lying on the ground right by the front door. She was found with her shoes on, as well as a plastic bag over her head, she had been murdered. Catherine's father then went upstairs to the master bedroom, and there they found Jeff. He too was dead after hanging himself with a belt in an apparent murder-suicide. After finding the bodies, Catherine's father insisted on staying on the scene to make sure that the authorities handled her body properly. You can see in the clips that I'm about to show you that crime scene investigators carry her little body out, covered in a sheet, and then load her into the crime scene van. Brian, who was also at the scene, was just inconsolable. He was collapsed on the floor, just in shock after what he had just found. Well, Yuki, this is just a horrific tragedy. A police captain tells me that this scene has shaken some of the most experienced detectives and police commanders. Authorities confirming that a 45-year-old man is dead and a 7-year-old daughter also dead in this apparent murder-suicide. It happened here on the 4500 block of Wild Street in Maniunk. Police say that there was an ongoing bitter custody dispute between the girl's father and mother. She had been dropped off here on Saturday morning and was supposed to come back to her mom's house Sunday night, but her family members grew concerned when she didn't return. So just before 11 this morning, the girl's stepfather made entry into this home and found that horrific scene. A loved one tells me that this little girl was just radiant and extraordinary. She was set to enter second grade at Edgewood Elementary, according to a spokeswoman for the Pensbury School District, which sent a letter to parents notifying them of grief counseling on Wednesday and Thursday from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. Neighbors say that this man always seemed happy to have his daughter. Investigators say that they did find a note inside, but those contents are not being released publicly. According to the medical examiner, Caden had died a brutal, violent death. She had died as the result of blunt force injuries to her head. Jeff had beat Caden over the head four times with a 35-pound dumbbell. It was said that Caden fought back as hard as she could, but it wasn't enough. After beating her to death, he flipped her lifeless body over and tied a plastic grocery bag over her head, securing it with an iPhone charger to make sure that she could not and would not survive. According to Catherine, she told Caden that if she was ever scared of her dad, that she should run away as fast as she could and get to a trusted adult who could call 911 or Catherine. She believes that Caden was by the door with her shoes on so that she could get out. But before she got that chance, she was murdered. Then, after violently beating his daughter to death, Jeff went upstairs and washed his hands. It's been reported differently depending on what source you look at, but he either wrote the suicide note right after killing his daughter or right before but either way, he went upstairs to at least grab the pre-written suicide note before returning back downstairs and throwing the note next to his daughter's lifeless body. The contents of the note have not been released publicly, but according to Catherine, the note said something along the lines of, you get what you deserve. After this happened, Catherine had the heartbreaking duty of explaining what happened to Caden to her little brothers. Of course, they were too young to understand at that time. They didn't know where Caden was or why her dad would want to hurt her. It was just such a horrible situation for the family. 
And of course, in the aftermath of this horrible, awful situation, Catherine was also pissed at the courts. They allowed this to happen. She warned them over and over and over again, but they wouldn't listen. Even Brian's own family members warned the courts, but they wouldn't listen to them either. Despite the fact that Catherine had been granted a restraining order against him, the fact that they knew that he was violent, the fact that the courts were concerned with his mental health, he was still allowed to have unsupervised parental visitation. It is absurd. Tonight, one question lingers for a family dealing with the death of... Hi, I'm Hayden. This bubbly seven-year-old girl. That question, not why her dad in his home in Maniung killed her, but why a court system didn't prevent dad from being alone with the child in the first place. Insofar as red flags go, you would not find a guy with more red flags. He was not a sane person. He was not a good person. And she didn't want to go over there. What could we do? Young Caden Mancuso's aunts say several people in her family had a restraining order against dad, yet a family court judge thought it was still safe for the seven-year-old to have an unsupervised visit with him. It was at one of those visits yesterday that he killed her. Knowing the system, this is something that doesn't happen every day. Karen Ulmer Pendergast is a child custody attorney who's been practicing for more than 20 years. She explains why the courts may have allowed Caden's father unsupervised visits despite his violent history. Anytime there's a criminal record that's more than 10 years, it's not really even usually relevant in a custody case. Um, I did look up the docket in this particular case, and it was uh, not 10 years, but it wasn't um, necessarily more recent as far as the aggressive behaviors. According to attorney Pendergast, family courts often rationalize that just because someone is violent towards adults, it does not mean they'll be violent towards a child. Without having a violent history towards children, um, it would be really inconceivable that someone would go to that extreme against a child that they thought to have. But Catherine isn't the type of person who just sat and did nothing. She wanted to make a change. She knew that there is so much fundamentally wrong with the courts and the child protection services as a whole. By June of 2019, Catherine made her argument in front of policymakers at the Capitol, opposing a bill that would favor a 50-50 presumption custody between both parents. She argued that the parental rights should not come first. The child's rights should. She argued that passing a bill that gives a presumption of 50-50 custody right off the bat puts many children in danger. She wrote about everything we heard in this case up to this point, about how he was known to have such a violent past and the courts heard from multiple people how Caden was in danger every time she spent time alone with him. She also spoke of the issue that Jeff brought up earlier in their court battles, which is called parental alienation. Jeff had accused Catherine of parental alienation, saying that she was alienating Caden from Jeff, not protecting her. He claimed that she was being rotten and spiteful by keeping her away from him, by not allowing 50-50 custody. However, Catherine stated that he only used this as a tactic to distract from the real issues, which were Caden's safety and well-being. She argued in her rebuttal to that 50-50 custody bill that so many abusive parents will use alienation as a bogus argument to get the protective parents less time with their child. So she argued that passing this bill would only give more power to bogus arguments like this and more power to abusers that shouldn't have children to begin with. To go further, Catherine, alongside many people who helped and backed her, decided to propose a new bill in front of Congress. It is estimated that thousands of children every year are court-ordered into the custody of an abusive parent, often without supervisions or safeguards in place. Even further, some dangerous parents even use the court systems to harm children or the other parent. Despite how often this continues to happen, courts still make these mistakes every single day. 
Over 900 children have been killed by their abuser within the past five years when the safe parent either tried to leave or already left and the child was placed back with their abuser. So, Catherine helped to push Congress to pass a new law in their state called the Keeping Children Safe from Family Violence Act or Caden's Law Against the Violence Against Women Act or VAWA. Caden's Law incentivizes states to ensure that their child custody laws adequately protect children at risk by, quote, restricting expert testimony to only those who are appropriately qualified to provide it. Evidence from court, appointed, or outside professionals regarding alleged abuse may be admitted only when the professional possesses demonstrated expertise and experience in working with victims of domestic violence or child abuse, including sexual abuse. Limiting the reunification camps and therapies which cannot be proven to be safe and effective. No reunification treatment may be ordered by the court without scientifically valid and generically accepted proof of safety, effectiveness, and therapeutic value of the particular treatment. Providing evidence-based ongoing training to judges and court personnel on family violence subject matter, including child sexual abuse, physical abuse, emotional abuse, coercive control, implicit and explicit bias, trauma, long and short-term impacts of domestic violence and child abuse on children, and victim and perpetrator behaviors. Courts must consider evidence of past or physical abuse, including protection orders, arrests, and convictions for domestic violence, sexual abuse, or child abuse of the accused parent. By March of 2022, Catherine actually got to go to the White House and meet President Biden to sign the new title under the VAWA Act. The reason that I'm making this video is actually because I was contacted by an advocate with the Arizona Parents Against Court Corruption. She provided me with links to some great resources, including the website which describes Caden's Law, nationalsafeparents.org. This website allows you to do your own research into the issue and even become an advocate yourself. You can join the fight at their website if you want to. If you are from Arizona, the Arizona Parents Against Court Corruption also has a Facebook group where they will post how you can get involved with helping protect our state's children. I also have listed down below a website called loveourchildrenusa.com. That website provides pretty much step-by-step -step instructions on how you can become an advocate in your community. Those sources will be listed down below. With this video, I highly encourage each and every one of you to share any and all resources that you know of for your state specifically. I will have as many resources and information listed down below that pertains nationally and to my state, but I know that you guys are from all over the country and all over the world, so if you have any other information or resources that you would like to share, please do down below in the comments. Many of you may already know this, but I do work with children and health care. I am a huge advocate for the safety and well-being of children. I want each and every one of you to be as active as you can when you're consuming true crime content, especially content that involves children. So please just don't listen to Caden's story and move on with your life. Listen to her story and help us do something about it. Look into your local resources at your state or even your county or community to see how and if you can get involved even if it is just reading about the massive problem that we are facing with children's rights or signing a petition or literally just being aware of the issues that are facing your community so that you can be vigilant. Anything is helpful and I encourage each and every one of you to check out the listed resources down below and share anything that you have that may be helpful for others. But that is where I'm going to end today's case. I know that this was a really, really tough case to listen to. I personally had to stop researching multiple times to take a break because this was a lot to handle. But I am really happy that Caden's mother took the grief and the pain that she had and has been able to do amazing things. I really hope that Caden's Law helps. I hope that it makes a difference. And even if it saves the life of only one child from an abuser, then I will say it's doing its job. I can't even imagine the heartbreak, the frustration, the pain that Caden's mother and the rest of her family had to go through after all of this. They did everything that they could to prevent this from happening and it still wasn't enough. So again, I really am... I'm so impressed anytime a family uses a tragedy like this to make change in their communities and especially like Catherine is doing, she's doing it for the entire nation, which is so impressive to me. So again, make sure you check out the resources down below and if you do have anything to share, please do so. But that is where I'm going to end today's video. 
If you liked this video, please make sure to go ahead and leave this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. I put out new true crime and mystery videos every single week. Don't forget to turn that notification bell to on so you don't miss out on any of my future videos. If you want to start saving money and spending less, make sure you visit rocketmoney.com slash Rachel Shannon, which will be listed down below. Make sure you follow my Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok. All are going to be listed down below as well. If you have any case suggestions, please make sure to fill out the Google form, which is also listed in the description box. With that, I hope you guys have an amazing week. Stay safe, stay healthy, and I hope to see you next time. Bye!